Hello everybody, good evening, and happy Halloween, happy Samhain. If you're just coming to my channel, welcome. We talk a lot about historical clothing around here, so if you're interested, like and subscribe. Otherwise, we're going to be talking today about 16th century morning clothing and black clothing. Just to kind of get everybody in the feeling, if you're stuck at home because you're not going out trick-or-treating or going out to a party, thanks for showing up and having some fun with me today. One of the big, it's almost a given sort of typical things I found in my research for this time period is there's a lot of black clothing. Not only was it just generally fashionable at this point in time to be able to afford the extensive amount of dye stuff to make your clothing black, but people just kind of liked having it around, it seems. There's a lot of different types of black. If you go watch the Welsh Vikings video, he does a great dye progression with the different stages, how long you can leave it in for one black ink recipe or one black dye recipe. So I would totally recommend seeing that. Go ahead and see the links down below to his video if you'd like to go and take a look at that. One of the other really fun things that came across was there's, there ended up being different dye or mordantine techniques that different city-states would use to get different fabrics. My understanding is that's how they would get different depths of dyes and different richnesses and tones in their fabric. One thing to keep in mind is not all black reads the same. There's going to be a lot of different base dyes that you use to get to black sometimes. And depending on your lighting, your black might look a little different. So in natural light, not candlelight, the dress actually looks gray. It is charcoal gray, maybe. It's the closest thing I could come up with when I was doing some research to make my German outfit here to more of a poor black or a scholar's black. I love this dress and in the right sort of candlelight, it does look black. So keep that in mind. There's going to be different stages in that dyeing process. And depending on what you could afford, you might have something that is almost black but not black like we would think about it with punk, goth, biker pants and stuff. So talking about it regionally a little bit, different regions took different stances or different practices into their morning clothing is another really cool thing I've realized. So in Germany and in England, they, in more of a formal sense, would have these robes. It almost looks like a hopeland or a tunic and a lear pipe hood that you would see as a holdover from the previous centuries. The 15th, 14th, 15th centuries hoods are still very much part of morning wear. By the end of the 16th century or the second half of it, the tail might be gone, but they were still wearing those hoods for quite a while. I didn't see as much of it in the 17th century when I kind of did a bookend with late 15th to early 17th. That was definitely typical in more of a state or formalized morning. A really cool thing, if you want to take a think about it, is the English crown actually didn't always wear black. It was typical these outfits would be black when you were doing more formalized following a procession as a mourner, attending a funeral, that sort of thing, where you would wear that outfit I just described in black. But Henry VII and Henry VIII actually wore blue. I cross-referenced this with a couple different things, wondering if maybe it was just a typo or like a navy blue black dye base, but it seems like it was blue. And when you go through Henry VIII's wardrobe accounts in more detail, you can probably start to glean that he associated that color with death and that sort of thing. He didn't wear it a whole lot. He wore a lot of black. He wore a lot of reds, golds, 
all sorts of other colors, but he really didn't seem to care for blue. And it might tie back to the fact that his state mourning robes were made of blue and so were his father's. The state mourning robes his daughter Elizabeth wore, since that was the next monarch I found a record of for that in the 16th century, were actually purple. Kind of wondered if they were over dyed from the previous one or if they just bought new fabric. I didn't really find a good answer to that. But again, just trying to make sure I wasn't reading the wrong wardrobe account. I went through the different colors of different um, formal robes that she was wearing. The red for parliament, gold for coronation, and so on. The purple ones really were her state mourning robes. So now that you've kind of got this whole state mourning, like you go to the coffin and you pray sort of thing in your head, there's also more of a concept of personal mourning. And that was almost universally in black in Germany and in England at this point. You're going to find black clothing when the Feast of St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre happened. Elizabeth actually throws her entire court into mourning over the Protestants that were killed. Everyone's wearing black. They make a great show of it, actually, for the ambassadors and made a political statement of how awful it was that the Protestants were killed. And you could use mourning as a political tool at this point. I think today we still do that to some extent, don't we? So that's England. You're going to find a lot of black. They do have these more formalized robes, but they've also got more secular garments that you might wear towards the second half of the century where you're just wearing lots of black. Um, in Spain, there's another concept of it. You, you don't really see a whole lot of references to these more almost liturgical looking robes that you see in England and Germany. They have a reference to mantles over and over again when I was reading through Anderson where you're talking about these black capes. It was, again, a huge status symbol to be able to pay for not only yourself, but everybody else to be wearing black mourning clothing and be decked out for the state funeral on the occasion. One thing I didn't find was any reference to yellow being worn as a form of mourning clothing in Spain. The only reference I've seen of this would have been in Alison Wurr's Six Wives of Henry VIII, I think. But when I was going through the actual Spanish sources, it wasn't a thing that I could find anywhere. If you were wealthy, you wore black. All the black. Black velvet, black wool. If you couldn't afford fancy silk fabrics, but you were wearing black with one exception of if you were extraordinarily poor. The poor were actually prone to wearing white or sort of a off-white beige colored, almost like a sheep color. That's because they couldn't afford the, the crazy black fabric. It was that expensive. You did just go buy a little black dress and go to somebody's funeral. This was a garment that you probably would have over dyed later or tried to keep as white as you could and that was your mark of your piety and sincerity in your mourning rather than wearing a black fabric you would wear something you had to keep clean but there there was no thing about yellow so that whole story where henry the eighth and anne boleyn were wearing yellow to honor catherine of aragon's passing because it was a national color of mourning in Spain isn't a thing. Um, sorry to debunk that. Feel free to debate kindly down in the comment section if you've got other resources to verify that. They were probably wearing yellow because at that point they were both very frustrated and upset with her and it was actually an easy way for them to celebrate they weren't going to be invaded by the Holy Roman Empire. Um, they were happy, and so they wore yellow. There's a, a specific reference they make to by one of the ambassadors about how it was to honor them, and I 
think we're missing the tongue-in-cheek sarcasm in the words where we're saying it was to honor them. Because Anne didn't like the lady. She wouldn't have honored her. Sorry. Anyway, getting off that soapbox. So one of the last sections of the European area that we're going to talk about, and I am talking mostly about Western Europe at this point, is Italy. So I looked at Italy as what we would now conceptualize it as that whole peninsula, as well as trying to dig into some specific city-states. And again, black was the thing. Most of the time people were wearing black when they were in mourning. If you weren't actively involved in a religious order, you might not be wearing the black robes that you saw up in Northern Europe, in Germany and England, that sort of thing. But you were definitely wearing black. One of the really cool anecdotes that I saw come out of this actually was in conjunction with Venice. There's a couple accounts where some of the courtesans realized that the widows walking around in black weren't being harassed. They were being allowed to just go about their day, do their thing. And so these courtesans actually started wearing black themselves to go and walk through town. It was a brief time period. It got regulated against because people didn't like not knowing who they were. But for that was a really cool little tidbit that I found as I don't know, would you call that camouflage? Good on you ladies. My, I tip my hat to you. But for the most part, yeah, everybody was wearing black. It was becoming a lot more secularized. And that's pretty much what I've got for you in regards to that. In so I also just wanted to touch briefly on Memento Mori. So it's a practice that comes over from the Middle Ages. It's still going strong through the 16th century. And you're going to find things like this. This is a version of a 15th century Paternoster. If I can get the camera to pick up and focus on it here. But you would wear memorial jewelry or things to remind you that death happens. Let's see if we can get these guys to turn around. It's not going to focus, is it? Nope. So check it out on Instagram. There will be a photo that gets posted in conjunction with this video where you can see the cute little skulls on the pattern noster. But you would see prayer beads that have little skulls carved into them. Holbein actually has a portrait of the ambassadors that has a skull painted into it. I seriously for years thought that was photoshopped until I was taking an art history class and he painted that in there himself. That was an interesting bit of realization for me. But they also weren't quite as, they were and they weren't as shy about death. They were a little bit more concerned about it. They were a lot more superstitious about it, you could say. But at the same time, it was a very active part of their life. You would see it a lot more consistently. Not everybody lived as long as they do today. And when they were living longer, you would see a lot more funerals. Let's just be honest about that. So if you're only going to have a couple garments, you're probably going to have something in black to be able to wear to those occasions. And you're also going to be conscious of that because you don't want, in the Middle Ages, you did not want to pass without being in a state of grace because you didn't want to go to purgatory. That was kind of their thinking. But these remind you to be good. I think that's basically what I got from my art history classes. Be good. And that's pretty much all we've got today. So thank you for sticking around to watch. I hope you have an amazing Halloween. Stay safe out there. And if you're in the U.S., don't forget to go vote. We'll chat with you soon and have a great night.